designed a new um, gauge watch for Boo. I thought it'd be quite nice to sort of do something a little bit spooky um, and you can also use this um, as like a mug wag or something. Maybe you probably if you're going to stand something hot on it you'd want to do it in like a cotton yarn or something but this is obviously using the same yarn that I'm using for the main blanket so it's Stylecraft Special double knit now for here i've got graphite and white you'll have whatever colors you're using obviously so for the gauge swatch we are just doing the one repeat wide and that is 24 plus 5 stitches okay so that's what i've got here but i've actually written the pattern for the gauge swatch here as if you were repeating it across because if you want to you might actually like to get started on your blanket a bit early say or put this somewhere else you can actually include this just repeat it along and include it in your blanket so what I thought I'd do I'll show you what it looks like here if you are just making the gauge swatch with your you know starting with 29 stitches but I am actually gonna for this tutorial I'm just gonna do an extra one so you can see how it works as a repeat okay so I'll put that out of the way so starting with our C1 colour, which is in my um for my colour way, it's the white. So we start with a length of chains. Now I know some people like to do the chainless foundation double crochets, but um for the purpose of my new border, my new border method where you don't need to slip round a slip stitch as you actually have like a chain. We're inserting a chain at each end of every row and you really need that right at the very start as well so like on your chain level where if you do the foundation double crochet you'll find that it's you haven't got a chain there so i always recommend that you start with actually chains okay now if you find that you tend to chain quite tightly i'd recommend that you just go up a hook size just for the chain okay um i don't mine is usually reasonably okay for the start so i'm going to be using i'm actually using a 3.75 millimeter hook but the pattern suggests that you use a four mil i just go slightly smaller now because i've noticed over the over time as i've done more and more mosaic crochet that my um my tension's probably got a little bit looser so whichever hook that you would usually use for this yarn go with that to start with and then as i said we're going to start with the length of chains so if you're just making the gauge swatch you are going to be making 29 chains now i am going to be adding an extra 24 onto that so i can make um the wider wider version just to show you how it is if you want to repeat it across so when i start my chains i don't usually put a slip knot on the hook i usually just do what i did there just twist the yarn round just so you don't you know you've got it's easier this will be like a bonus chain so if I now pulled that tight it would effectively be like a slip knot but I'm going to leave that loose that just gives you an extra chain just in case you've miscounted you've got another one you can work into okay so call that a loose slip knot so now say for the gauge swatch you're going to be making 29 chains so I'm going to do a few more than that so so they have to do the chain like so. So don't pull them too tight, but you don't want them too loose either. Just keep them nice and even. So when you've got your chains, which is 29 for the gauge swatch, or 53, if you do want to carry on with what I'm doing here and just do the extra one wide, and I'll see you when you've done that. Okay, so I have now got 53 chains, not including this initial loose one. So the idea is it if I've got my count right, I'll be able to pull that tight once I, I'm confident I've got the right number of stitches. Okay, so what you'll probably notice is um, I've say, I'm have i saying to fasten off at the end of this chain. Now, the only reason for doing that is if you wanted to use this as like a, a mug rug or something and you want to leave a little fringe, 
um, it's nice to have sort of an end a loose end at each end so you've got the fringe at each end but if you prefer to just carry on and come back along the chain you'll just need to do one extra one as a turning chain so for the purpose of what I'm showing you here I'm going to do that okay that's actually I think in the main pattern I say to do this the extra chain there so the stitch repeat is a multiple of 24 plus 5 stitches but that would then be if you're doing if you're not going to cut at the end of the chain you need that extra chain so it would actually be 24 plus 6 chains hopefully that makes sense and I actually can't remember if I just added the extra chain or not <laughs> so I'm going to do it now anyway because it won't matter if I've got too many at the other end okay so we'll do that so there's the turning chain so now what we're going to do I mentioned earlier about the border where we're going to have a chain at each end of every row we're also if you if you're not familiar with overlay mosaic crochet you generally do an envelope border on that which is basically two borders so you'll work one on the right side one on the wrong side of your blanket and join them together at the end so to do that we are going to be working one border when we get along the bottom into one loop and the other into the other loop there which means that when we do our starting or foundation row we're going to be working into the back of the chain can you see you've got these sort of back bump these sort of ridges on the back so we're going to be working into those so that's another reason for telling you not to do your chains too tight because if you do them really tight you can struggle to get your hook into there okay so we missed this first chain because that's our turning chain and then we've got a double crochet okay so every row will start with a double crochet then the, the chain that I mentioned before so then we're going to miss this next chain so we always miss the chain there under our new chain okay and then you're just going to work a row of double crochets as I said oops hold on so miss that one row of double crochets into that back bump like so okay so one to so carry on like that until you have got that will be your multiple of 24 so if you're just doing the gauge swatch you'll have 24 stitches and then one more because so we just need to even up our pattern so between the spaces you are going to need 25 stitches or if you're doing what I'm doing 49 okay so that should take you to sort of three before the end okay so i have now just double checked and i've now got 49 49 stitches after that initial chain there okay that's just what i need so that's two lots of 24 plus one okay so that's what you're going to have between your chains so i'm now going to do another chain and as before we're going to miss this one and then there we go work a double crochet in there and say so, and tighten that up if you were doing a much larger blanket or something what you might want to do is actually just leave that for a little bit longer until you actually start creating the pattern just as a double check okay so that is row one and i'm going to fasten off okay so scissors you're going to need your scissors nearby as you were doing overlay mosaic because that is what we do we cut the yarn at the end of every row because we're always working on the right side so you're constantly working from right to left if you're right-handed or left to right if you're left-handed okay so for the main pattern when you actually get started on that I usually recommend you do another row in this same color in your um, so this would be effectively a foundation row and then row one would be a plain row which would basically be um, double crochets into the back loop all the way along in the same color just because when you're doing the border it's nice I think it's nice to just have that little extra um, bit of blanket to work with at the start and I'll also add an extra one on at the end okay but for the purpose of the gauge swatch I'm not bothering them with that I'm going to go straight to my contrast color okay but you say for the main blanket what you would be doing is what I'm now going to show you here but this would be like a row one that was the foundation row this would then be row one in the same color okay hopefully I haven't confused you horribly okay so apart 
on apart from that very first row I always start with a standing double crochet so to do a standing double crochet you start with a slip knot on your hook however you do it and I don't think what I do is technically a slip knot but it works so I've just done like that effectively like that initial loose chain was and then pull it there we go so you've got a knot on your hook so what we then do as I said we go back to the beginning of our row and you need to make sure you've got your chain the right way around and you'll know it's the right way around because you'll be able to see the top loop sort of tilted towards you whereas if it was the wrong way up it looks like that so you can't see when you're holding it flat you can't see the loops on the stitches okay so that's upside down that's the right right, right way up and the right side okay so I've got my slip knot and as I said what we do is we always go into this very first stitch and for this one it's the only it's only two stitches on the whole row which you'll be working under both loops so I'm going to do that so it's a standard double crochet under both loops then we have our chain okay so we're then going to miss this chain and then we are going to work just a row double crochets but only into this back loop okay so we need to leave the front loops there we need to then leave them free because it because when we create our pattern we're going to be dropping down we're going to be using them on the next row okay so for this row for row two of your gauge swatch pattern it is just double crochets into that back loop all right so if you do that all the way along and i'll see you when you get to that next chain there we are so i've now got to that last chain and the same I'm not going to show you the ends of the rows anymore because it's always going to end with one chain miss that chain and then I'll double crochet under both loops so you have double crochet a normal double crochet under both loops for the very first and very last stitch of each row and in between that'll be if you're doing double crochets in between they'll always be into the back loops okay so cut that off so that's row two so now we are going to start creating our pattern so we're switching back to our c1 color again remember slip knot on the hook and then as always whoops it's going to be a double crochet under both loops there so by doing the slip knot it's quite easy to see where your first stitch goes because it's right next to there so by doing a standing stitch I find that's easier to know exactly where you start and it also helps that you've then got a chain okay so it's always going to be starting with a double crochet under both loops then a chain miss the chain so now we go straight into and if you look at the read the written pattern it's an F stitch so what I've done um, so I don't need to have separate UK and US terms in my patterns I've sort of developed this universal um, sort of notation so what you need to think about is is whether you are going to be work so all of your double crochets like I've just said get worked into the back loop so they will be a B okay so that will be either a back loop double crochet for the UK terms or a back loop single crochet if you generally prefer US terms but in my patterns there that that will be called a B so B for back loop double crochet when you come to making your pattern you're going to be working into the front loops two rows below so that's F for front so for UK terms that's a treble for US terms that would be a double crochet okay so we start with an F so we're gonna remember to miss the chain so we need to go straight into this loop here and work the treble okay so that is before our repeat starts if you're looking at the chart you'll see um, the sort of repeat box starts the line for that is right sort of here and if you're looking at the written instructions there's an asterisk there okay and then our repeat is going to start with another F another front loop treble okay so where you see if you're working into the front loops and the stitches that get worked into the front loops are UK trebles okay now we've got eight B's 
so that is back loop double crochets now what we've got to make sure we do is skip so this is our chain we've got to make sure we skip these two double crochets behind the trebles okay so otherwise we'll end up with the wrong stitch count so that's the chain which we've already skipped these are the two stitches behind our treble so we're going to skip those two and then we start here with a little run of eight back loop double crochets okay three four five six seven eight then we've got five front loop trebles so you hold it nice and flat hopefully you'll be able to see if you were doing another double crochet it would be worked into there so you go straight down like a treble there okay and if you're not sure because sometimes it can look a little bit sort of wonky and you may not be sure if you've actually gone into the right loop because we did eight back loop double crochets there you should have eight spare front loops down two rows down okay so one two three four five six seven eight so we know we've done that right okay so now we've got and that so that, that was the one front loop treble one f we now need four more because there's a little run of five trebles there three four five okay then we've got another eight b's one two three four oops five you see i actually accidentally sort of went into that sort of third loop there i don't bother to do that um i know some people like if you're working into a back loop to also pick up that extra sort of third loop there i don't bother because to be honest the bit that you see mainly it is the loop at the front so you're not really going to help that's not going to help much if you've gone into the back one and that just slows me down so just literally the back loop is fine so we had one two three four five six seven eight and actually talking about the loops if you find when you're working and that when you've done a treble it's sort of you're getting big gaps like that sort of showing what that generally means is probably two things one you are making your trebles a bit too tight so they sort of squash down and another thing is you may be leaving your top loops a little loose um, so what you need to do to keep these as neat as possible is to try and keep the top loops of your stitches all nice and even and not too big so don't pull them really really tight but just so they're nice and even like so so to do that if you find you are getting those loops when you're just making your stitches just gently get into the habit just gently tensioning that first part of your stitch just a little bit more than you usually do it'll soon become second nature if you find you're doing that so yeah so and rather than leaving it like that just gently tension it so it's not too big okay so now when we come to do our front loop treble, you say, make sure that's not too big. So we've got our run of it, two, four, six, eight back loop double crochets. So our repeat ends with two front loop trebles. Okay. Two. So if you're only making a gauge swatch, you will now be up to your chain at the end of the row. And what I'm going to do, because I'm carrying on, the next repeat then starts with one more front loop treble. So I'll just show you that's one more front loop treble. And then eight back loop double crochets and so on. Okay. So there we go. Like I say, for the gauge swatch, well, that is your repeat. Okay. So I'm just going to carry on and finish this row. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll show you row four. Okay. So there we have up to row three so row four again using c2 again so start with your standing double crochet in that first stitch and a chain miss the chain right so we now start with two b's two back loop double crochets now you'll see that's the only thing you can do when you've got a treble on the row before 
because there's no front loop available to work into because the treble's covering it up. So that's a little tip. If you ever find in a pattern that when you're reading the instructions, it appears to be telling you to do a front loop treble when you got trebles already in the row below, you've probably miscounted. So it's worth checking that. I mean, they, obviously there could be a mistake in the pattern, but generally that will mean that you've miscounted somewhere. All right. So you can only work a double crochet, back loop double crochet when you see a treble. So we've now got five front loop trebles. One, two, three, four, five. So that's the body of our first cat. Two back loop double crochets. And then one front loop treble again, which is going to be the start of his little tail. Okay. Then we've got five back loop double crochets along here, because as I said before, when you see trebles, that's the only thing you can do. Four, five. And then we've got another cat, which is facing the opposite way to the first one. So that's one treble. Two back loop doubles, and then say so make sure you're missing your two front loops there. Then you've got five front loop trebles. Okay, three, four, five, and then we're going to end our repeat. Or if you're doing the gauge swatch, end your row with two back loop double crochets and like I say if you're doing the gauge watch you will now have your chain and one double crochet in the end okay so that is row four so I'm going to carry on and complete that and I'm going to come back and show you row five okay so for row five back to C1 again we're obviously going to start with our standing double crochet and a chain as we always do so then we have got one front loop treble before our repeat starts, okay? And then the repeat starts with seven back loop double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one front loop treble, two back loop double crochets, and then we're gonna have three front loop trebles. So this is now between our little cats. Okay. And two back loop double crochets. One front loop treble, whoops, one front loop treble, seven back loop doubles, five, six, seven. And our repeat ends with one front loop treble, or as I've said before, if you're doing the gauge swatch, you will now have got to your chain at the end of the row. Okay, so again, I'm going to repeat this row and I'll come back and we'll run through row six together. Okay, so I've now just got started on row six with the edge stitch and then that chain. And then we have one back loop double crochet before we start our repeat. Then we have seven front loop trebles. One, two, three, four, four, seven, two back loop double crochets. And one front loop treble, 
There we go, so the little cat is starting to take shape. Then we've got three back loop double crochets, and so we're now going to sort of do what we've just done for this cat in reverse order. So that's one front loop treble. Ooh. Two back loop doubles. And seven trebles. Whoops. Four, five, six, seven, and then we end the repeat with one back loop double crochet. So obviously, if you're just doing the gauge swatch with, you'll now be up to that chain at the end okay so i'm now just going to carry on and complete my row six and i'll come back and show you row seven okay so i've now just got started on row seven with the edge stitch chain and then there's the front loop treble before we actually start our repeat okay so then we start with seven back loop double crochets Six, seven, two front loop trebles. Oh, try again and hold the yarn. Two, two back loop double crochets. Then one front loop treble. So that's now between the two little cats. So we're now going to do this in reverse order. So that's two back loop double crochets, two front loop trebles, seven back loop doubles, five, six, seven and our repeat ends with one front loop treble so obviously if you're doing the gauge swatch that is you'll now be up to that chain at the end so i'm now going to carry on finish my row here okay i've just got started on row eight with the edge stitch chain and a back loop double crochet before we start our repeat so for our repeat we've now got one more back loop double crochet then five front loop trebles. One, two, three, four, five. Then we've got eleven back loop double crochets. Two, three. Ten, eleven, five back front loop trebles. Four, five, and then our repeat ends with two back loop double crochets. Okay, so obviously you all know if you're doing the gauge swatch, you'll now be up to your chain at the end. So I'll carry on and complete this and I will see you. For... Actually, I think you can probably do row nine yourself. That's a quite a nice straightforward one. It's basically just going along, working a front loop treble where we did the back loop double crochets before and vice versa. OK, so you'll have two front loop trebles here. So one before the repeat, then one to start the, the actual repeat. Five back loop double crochets, then your run of 11 front loop trebles and so on. So carry on and do that and I will see you for row 10. Okay, so just got started on row 10 with the edge stitch chain and there's a back loop double crochet before we start our repeat. So this is another nice straightforward one. So we just now have two back loop double crochets. Then three front loop trebles. So we're up to like the cat's neck now. Three. 
13 back loop double crochets. Twelve, thirteen, then three front loop trebles. Two, three, and we're going to end our repeat with three back loop double crochets. There we go. So carry on, complete that, or indeed, if you are at the end. Um, obviously you've got your chain and your double crochet then and then if you want to do row 11 on your own and I'll come back and we'll do row 12 together okay so this is what it looks like after row 11 um, row 12 so you can see the cats are now starting to take shape and we've just left this little spaces here which is going to be the bottom of the little coffins that go between the cats so what I've now done, I've obviously I've started with the edge stitch, the chain, and then there's one back loop double crochet before our repeat starts. Okay, so then we have one more back loop double crochet, and then you should see we've got some new um a new symbol in the chart. There's some square brackets. So whenever you see square brackets in any of my patterns, what that means is whatever is inside those square brackets you do however many times it tells you to afterwards so this has got one f one b twice okay so that's what we're now going to do one f one b once and again one f one b so that's twice then we've got another F there. So that's now the cat's head with these little starry eyes. Okay. So then we've got four back loop double crochets. Or indeed Bs, as it would be in the written instructions. Three front loop trebles. Whoops. Two three, four back loop double crochets, then we've got one F one B twice again, so one, one, two, two, and then another F to complete the little cat's head there. And then our repeat ends with two more back loop double crochets. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on and complete that. So if you and I want to do row 13 by yourself, and I'll come back and we'll do row 14 together. So here we are after row 13. So the cats are almost finished now. We're just going to add that ears on this next round, uh, next row. So I've got started as usual with the edge stitch chain and a back loop double crochet before we start our repeat so now row 14 we have another back loop double crochet and then we've got more square brackets so that's one front loop treble and three back loop double crochets twice two three so that's once one front three back is twice then we've got five front loop trebles. Four, five. Then we've got more square brackets. So that's three back loop double crochets and one front loop treble twice. Okay, so that's one and another three. back and one front and then I'll repeat ends with two more back loop double crochets so you're all ready to start again with one back loop double crochet unless of course you're doing the gay swatch in which case you will now be up to your chain at the end okay so carry on and do row 15 yourself and I'll come back and we'll do row 16 together 
Okay, so this is what we're looking at after row 15. So we just got started on row 16 with the edge stitch chain and a back loop double crochet before we start the repeat. Now we've got a nice little run, this nice simple one again really. So we've got nine back loop double crochets. So that's two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we have two front loop trebles. One back loop double. Two trebles. Then I'm going to end the repeat with 10 back loop double crochets. So that will take you to your chain at the end of the row if you've done the gauge spots. So carry on with that. Um, do row 17 yourself and we can. I'll then come back and we will do row 18 together. Okay, so I've now just got started here on row 18 with the usual edge stitch chain and then the back loop double crochet that's before our repeat. So now start the repeat with three more back loop double crochets. Two, three, one front loop treble. Then we've got four back loop double crochets. Three, four, three front loop trebles. One double, three trebles. Then four. Double crochets again. One front loop treble and we're going to end with another four back loop double crochets. Okay, so we're getting there now. So carry on, complete that row. Do row 19 and I will see you for row 20. Okay, so we're getting there now. I've just now completed row 19 and got started on row 20 with the usual bits and pieces before the repeat. So our repeat for row 20 starts with three back loop double crochets. Two, three, one front loop treble. Then four double crochets. Two trebles, and we've got three doubles, and another two trebles. So this is the cross on the coffin. Four back loop double crochets. Now we've got one front loop treble and this is going to be another cross for these little ones that are above the cat's heads. Okay, and then our repeat ends, or indeed the gauge swatch basically ends with four back loop double crochets. And of course if you are doing the gauge swatch that will then take you up to that chain at the end of the row. Okay, so carry on and complete that. Um, and do row 21 yourself and I will come back and do row 22 with you. Okay, so almost done now, just two more rows to do. So row 22, obviously I've already got started with the usual bits and pieces before the repeat. And then our repeat is three back loop double crochets. One front loop treble. So that's that cross done. Then we've got five double crochets. Two. 
One, two, three, four, five, two front loop trebles. One back loop double and another two trebles. So that's the little coffin completed. Okay. Then we've got five double crochets again. Five, one treble, and then I'll repeat ends with four double crochets. So obviously if you're doing the page swatch you will now be at that last space so you can just finish that off. <coughs> okay so carry on and complete that and then once you've done row 23 it will look ta -da, like this. Okay obviously for mine I'll have an extra little section of cats. Okay, so that's your completed gauge swatch. Okay, so I've just done, run off and picked up my ruler. So we can now check the size of our gauge swatch. So rather than telling you it's so many stitches to 10 centimetres, I thought, to be honest, it might be easier to just measure the entire gauge swatch. Because I know sometimes people get a little confused. So if we now just plonk that there, can you see? That's at the starting end and the end. So that now is 15 centimeter oh, not straight 15 centimeters wide it may be fractionally less but basically 15 centimeters wide and that's using the special dk and if we go that way we've got 13 centimeters so um if you were using the um recreate then i found that mine was just slightly narrower but actually about the same length so it's not a massive amount in it you'll probably just find that i think this is a yeah just maybe a centimeter less maybe not even quite that okay so um so this is a nice little sort of free um gauge swatch come extra pattern that you can use for halloween and also if you buy um boo i've actually included in that a couple of bonus chats as well um some skeletons this sort of st skeleton standing up and some sort of dancing um, which I didn't come up with until after I'd made my sample and sent the pattern just about sent the pattern out to testing so I haven't had time to write all of that up but what I have done so you don't miss out is just drop those in so you'll get them as a little bonus pattern with your if you purchase the cow so if you purchase boo my Halloween cow you'll not only get this gauge swatch in addition to what's in the actual blanket but you'll also get two little skeleton charts so. <laughs>